blessedness of walking in obedience. Blessedness of walking in obedience. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name. We worship you for this opportunity to be in your presence to discuss your word. I pray, Father, that you open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your word. Transform our lives by the power of your spirit through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Today we are going to explore a topic that says blessedness of walking in obedience. As believers, the Lord expects obedience from us. Somebody may ask and say, what does it mean to obey? What the, the, the word obedience, what does it stand for? It's a common word that we use almost every day. You know, I checked out the meaning and I, I got some phrases that defines obedience. One of the phrases is um, compliance with the law. Or you can say with an order, compliance with an order, compliance with a request, compliance with law. Another definition has it to be submission to another's authority. That's what obedience is all about. That's what many people have defined obedience to be. So as a believer, how can we talk about the blessedness of walking in obedience unto the Lord? And how can we relate it to what the Lord is currently doing? What presently he's doing in the life of the church? That's the summary of what we are going to discuss today about. I want you to go with me. Let's go on a little journey. Let's go on a little journey. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. That's the first place where we are going to read Isaiah chapter 1 verse number 19 if you keep one finger there you can also keep another finger at the book of first Peter first epistle of Peter chapter 1 or rather chapter 2 first epistle of Peter chapter 2 verse 21 First Epistle of Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. All right, let's start with the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1, verse number 19. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. That's the word of the Lord. If you are willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. The Lord was speaking to the Jews through the mouth of his prophet Isaiah. So which means that to eat and to enjoy the good of the land, it requires obedience. It requires obedience. Okay. So we are going to have this discussion today from two perspectives. I want you to see the Lord talking to us from two perspectives today. We are going to see how the children of Israel moved from the land of bondage, the land of Egypt. They moved from there across the wilderness. From there, they were heading to somewhere. To the land of Canaan, the land of promise. That's the first perspective, the first way we are going to explore this obedience. The second aspect will be we are going to see how the church, the body of Christ, is a mirror of 
the children of Israel's son John from Egypt to the land of Canaan. How the church, the body of Christ, is on her way to heaven, which is our promised land. So, when you hear, if you are obedient, you shall eat the fruit of the land. I don't want you to see it from the earthly perspective alone. I want you to see it also as heavenly perspective. These people, they move from Egypt. They pass through the wilderness. They pass through a lot of uh, challenges until they go to the land of Canaan. And uh, we are going to see from the scripture so that uh, you, you can have something to review. The children of Israel, they had two prominent leaders among other leaders that helped them in this process. They had Moses. They had Joshua. Joshua, Moses started and Joshua finished leading them. I'm giving you an introduction where we are, what we are going to explore today. And now, pertaining to the church, the body of Christ, we want to see it and appreciate the fact that the Lord Jesus is the head of the body of Christ. He is the head of the church. And he has started a work in our lives as our master. And when his work on the earth as the Lamb of God for sacrifice, as his work was about to finish, he made a promise to the church. He made a promise to the body of Christ. He said, hey, I am not going to leave you comfortless. As you are going to continue after my departure, I will send to you the promise of the Father in the person of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will continue from where I stopped. And he has his work to do in you and through you so that you will be able to make it to heavenly promised land. Ah, you see where we are heading to? So we are going to explore the obedience of the children of Israel. How did they walk in obedience? What happened in the land of uh, uh, Egypt? How did they pass through the wilderness until they got to the land of Canaan? And also, how human beings have been relieved from the bondage of sin by the coming of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, and how the Holy Ghost is helping believers to make it to the promised land. You know, because people have been asking a lot of questions. One of the things that led me to bring this discussion up, how can we see the demonstration of the power of God in our generation? All the miracles that took place in us of the apostle. I thought of giving us a very good journey up till the time of the movement of God in Acts of the Apostles. So follow me to the book of First Peter. Let's read First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For even here unto we are ye called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. So the bottom line is following the steps of the master, the Lord Jesus Christ. He has called us. We have a high calling. The high calling we have received of the Lord is that we have to follow his steps as we move to the promised land. Thank you.